All right, here's something interesting. Um, if you've been following my channel, um, you probably noticed that in some of my videos, I talked about the crop factor on my cameras, uh, specifically my brand new Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K G2. And I says, wow, that looks weird. I'm so cropped. It must be that I have to buy another lens. So I bought two, but I really didn't have to. And I'm going to explain why and what I did about it right now. All right, so this is more or less the same vantage point as my previous video. And I have two other cameras. I have two main cameras here. This is a Blackmagic uh, Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. That's what this vantage point here is right now. Now, normally I would say I'd be recording this and telling it to record to external drives. And the last time I recorded a video, I recorded to a couple of these, which are NVMe drives dangling, literally hanging from the side of the camera. That's what I did, and it worked. And I recorded everything out, and everything went hunky-dory, peachy keen. But I said somewhere in the video, it says, boy, this lens, this uh, crop factor is driving me crazy, I said to myself. I said, look at how cropped I am here. I said, the camera is way further away from this camera. And this camera here has a crop factor because that's a micro four thirds. I don't remember what the lens is on there, but I had to get pretty wide. That's a, you cannot read it. Uh, it's upside down and I'm having a hard time reading. But anyhow, that's got a wide lens. I had to put a wide lens on it because it's relatively close to my desk. And then this one here, I says, boy, this is a 24 millimeter lens. That's crazy. Look how, how cropped I am. I'm practically, you know, practically on top of me here. So without further ado, this is what I, I discovered. So over here, maybe it's this view here. Here, there's my iPad. So I'm going to unlock my iPad. And I found a, a little app here that more or less mimics what's on the back of the screen, at least for a lot of the options. And you'll notice here, I have it on 4K DCI. Now I'm gonna push this button in a second, but you're gonna see what happens in real time because I'm gonna push the button right now. Whoa, all of a sudden, I've got a wide angle and I did not realize that. In other words, I didn't know that the record setting that was set on the camera literally when I took it out of the box had anything to do with how it comes out of the HDMI port. So if I switched back to this, this is the way it was the whole time. I had the record mode on Blackmagic RAW with uh, 4K DCI, but I could have just as easily done this when I took it out of the box and I never would have had to buy the two lenses that I bought, which I probably will use, but for other things. Uh, so what I've learned out of this is that I can also switch to this mode to get that wide screen. This is a, uh, here, I might as well show you again, number five is number six or number four. I don't remember which camera. So there are all these different modes. And there's the 5.7. That's a 5.7. This is the 4K DCI, which is a 4096 by 2160. So anyhow, as I switch through these, and they even have things like anamorphic, which you can't do unless you actually buy an anamorphic lens. So here's the 6K, and there I am in <laughs> in wide. It's wide. I didn't need to buy the lens. The bottom line is I knew there was a crop factor. My mind told me there's a crop factor, and I assumed that I wasn't getting the right image because I, think, I thought I needed a wider lens, and that's a 24 millimeter. I said, that's pretty wide already. Why is it... Why does it look like that? Well, the same thing, by the way, applies to this camera. So I'm going to switch over in my app. That one's in, uh, this, this is the 4K pocket camera. That one can also be in different modes, which have a slightly different crop factor at the top and bottom. Like this is its full sensor range, which is a 4096 by 2160. And then this is, uh, this is 28, 2688 times... 15, uh, no, 15, 12. And then, of course, there's the traditional uh, 3840 by 2160. But I can also switch over to a 1080, which is really cropped. So what I've learned here is that when you switch the record mode, 
it's not just pushing out whatever you did through the 1080 port on the camera, because the ports on these cameras are 1080. It actually crops that larger sensor to whatever proportions you choose. So if you choose something with a bit of a, a crunch onto it, it's just chopping tops and bottoms off. Same thing again with the 6K camera. As I jump through various modes, so this is the 4K mode, which was the one that I thought was too tight. Um, and that was also a problem. I had to keep moving my camera. And I have an electric thing because there I, I started off like that. So now when I move back to where I really want it to be, um, then I change the show, whatever I want to see in the shot. But I have more there. And now things that I thought were outside the camera range were in the camera range because it's wide. So I can't even imagine if I go from the 24 millimeter on there to a 14, which is what I just bought. But I'll test that in a future video. So this video is just basically talking about the crop factor in the sensor in addition to the crop factor from the lens. So it's something I wasn't aware of. Uh, by the way, one great thing, and I'll do this as a quick little tip, if you switch over to one of these modes, and I'm going to demonstrate it more on the 4K because it's more prominent, um, but if I switch over on this one here to a 1080, right, this mode, I have now decided this is my go-to way to, to, to focus because... As you may notice on my channel, I'm a single shooter. I have nobody running the camera, so I can't really focus on myself the way I would like to. What I used to do is put a little uh, target. I don't have it with me because I didn't use it today, but I have a little target that I would use, and I would put that like on a box, just like this, more or less like this, and then I'd go on the other side of the camera and then focus on the box, but the box is on the desk, and I actually have to compensate for where I'm actually sitting. So it made it trick. It was tricky. I had a little thing. I had to do that. And I would focus. But now, because of this, I could zoom this up, play with the focus, because you could focus with these cameras literally through the app and get your focus straightened out while in 1080 mode. And I'm having a bad time with that. You know why? Because I need glasses when I'm up close and the monitor is not up close. So anyhow, I could get my focus more or less the way I wanted to in this particular uh, field and then switch back over to my 4K. And I am still the same because it's just cropping. So the, the focus doesn't have to shift on like a zoom lens where you, you change the zoom, you got to change the focus. Uh, so another little quick tip. So the crop factor on the lens plus the crop factor on the sensor gives you a lot of different shooting options. And of course, one last thing about cropping. Uh, and I'm going to just talk to my main camera here. This is coming through right now in on a 4K camera. Of course, I'm pushing it through a, a Blackmagic A10 because I wouldn't be able to do these edits in real time. But if I had recorded this live in the camera, which is what I normally would do, I'd have 6K footage coming out of the camera, right? Right now I'd have 6K footage. And then I could decide in my software in post whether I want to crop here or crop there, which a lot of YouTubers and other photographers will use that effect quite quite often. They'll shoot something that's very wide and then occasionally do a tight shot, another tight shot, do a tight shot, shift it over to the left or to the right. And when you're doing it that way, you are essentially saying, I want to reframe this later. So I'm going to need the, the largest possible image. So you're shooting your 6K or some people, they buy 8K and 12K cameras these days. And then it they can have one camera and show literally five or six or seven different views where it's cropped and panned left, cropped and uh, panned top or bottom. And it gives you quite a, quite a lot of flexibility. So this video more or less is talking about cropping. There's so many different levels of cropping. You've got post-cropping, like I just described there. you got pre-cropping, which is the lens and... and, and the crop factor on the lens. And of course, as I just pointed out, when you have an app like this, you could, uh, I'm using the wrong camera here, you're cropping there. And of course, if you do crop that way, you're going to need to adjust your camera. And again, I'm a single shooter, so I have to actually put a little motor on to move my uh, field of view here. Oh, and I'll be doing videos on, on some of these other little tips that I've come up with as a single shooter that work well in my little studio here. So if you like that sort of thing, uh, stick around, uh, you know, make some comments, ask some questions, do the old thumbs up and subscribe and all that great stuff. 
it really helps out a channel like mine, uh, you know, a young channel with relatively small audience. Uh, so, and, and I posting whatever, you know, whatever I learn as I learn it on this channel. So I really do appreciate you sticking around. Hopefully you found this information useful. I've got some other follow-ups of some other things I've learned because these cameras and this ATEM are relatively new to me, like how I'm recording, what I'm recording them on, uh, different lenses, what they're going to look like. And I also have a lot of stuff to cover in audio because I have quite a bit of gear here to go over. So stick around. Thanks for watching.